My name's John Isaacson. Um, my official title at Monarch is technical sales. Uh, what that role is, is a resource for the sales department on technical aspects of the tractor. Uh, the other part of the role is I go look uh, for new crops, new regions to open up, new things that we might find challenging or things that we already know are challenging to go solve that problem in various different aspects. Um, I joined Monarch back in uh, 2022. Uh, Monarch was started in 2017 uh, with our beta and uh, pilot series tractors. Um, in 2022 of December, we delivered our first 50 tractors. And then in January of 23, we started delivering the rest of the tractors that we refer to as the PV tractors. As far as the Monarch tractors, some things that separated, obviously one is the electric aspect of it. I think probably as we look at the as electric aspect of a tractor versus a combustion engine tractor is I think oftentimes the misconception is, is how long will it run for and how many horse? Them are the two largest misconceptions. We have to pick a horsepower rating and we have to pick a time that how long the battery is good for. The interesting part about the Monarch is, is we're a 40 horse rated PTO tractor. We can run for a roughly around 12 hours up to 40 horse. Once we get above 40 horse, all we do is start to consume more energy. And all that does is reduces the run time. So we can get up over 70, 80 horse. And in some cases we're replacing 100 engine horse to 80 engine horse tractors with this quote unquote, 40 horse PTO tractor. As far as the autonomy, um, that's probably a little larger topic. Uh, there's some things that separate Monarch uh, from the rest of the autonomy industry. Um, the majority of the autonomy industry is steering by GPS, stopping by vision. Monarch is stopping by vision, steering by vision, and steering by GPS. Little known fact with Monarch is, is we actually have three versions of autonomy and steering. What that means is, is if we look at it from a crawl, walk, run status, our crawl is what we call row follow, which is very equivalent to the early days of auto steer where you picked a straight line and you're in a straight row and you went straight. Row follow is, is you pick a trellised crop where you have density on each side of you, you get in the row, you select row follow, and it not only drives by itself, steering off the rows, it will also stop. So if you have, let's say a, uh, an obstacle like um, a rock or uh, some sort of big branch, or in some cases, some crops will use fabric to cover up the, the um, wood chips, large enough piles of that it will stop for. It will also stop for a human wall and row follow. So that's our crawl stage. Our walk stage is what we call record and replay. So you can actually record a session. It will play it back autonomously exactly the way that you record it. So let's say I drove forward, turned to the right, turned to the left, lifted the three point, turned off the PTO, lowered the three point, turned on the PTO, when I was done with that, it would go back and replay that and do all them very same actions at the very same spot that it did that. That is done by steering of GPS. When we get into our auto drive or our path planned autonomy, we have a path planner, we get into the field, we send it, it steers through the rows through vision. When it gets to the end, it will turn and it will come back in and it will steer back through the rows through vision. It also stops through vision. So them are the three thing, the three types of autonomy, which the last one would be our run. 90% of the questions, conversations, obstacles, challenges that we had in the early days of auto steer are the exact same conversations, the exact same concerns, the exact same hurdles and challenges that I'm seeing today in autonomy. And one of the things that we still have to wrap our head around is, is although we have autonomy, that's only controlling the tractor. 
automation is controlling the implement. And I think that's probably one of the largest um, thought process things for everybody inquiring about autonomy, autonomy to get through is the fact of that the autonomy is simply only with the tractor. It can have implement functions happen. However, though, there is no implement monitoring yet. As soon as we start looking at implement monitoring, that now becomes in the world of automation. Um, so it's, in my opinion, in my experiences over the last seven years, is it's 90% of the same questions and it's, it's reliving another great product coming to market to change agriculture. Today, the top five applications that I would say that I see and have experience with in autonomy is, is Number one, as of today, is definitely the dairy industry. Um, the dairy industry has kind of taken us off guard, um, but is about 5x larger than we were told it was going to be. Um, and it's a very promising industry. Part of that drive is because it's a 24 seven business. If you're using something 24 seven, it's very easy to send out that ROI. If you're having energy efficiency, if you're having energy savings, if you're saving on labor, that's all very easy to calculate out. And dairy is a like almost a perfect scenario for autonomy because it's pretty controlled environments. Number two, I would say, as we look to it, uh, we call it sod, but I would say open area mowing in Southern states. If you get down to parts of Florida, you're talking about 11 months of mowing grass. So you get into these sod farms, they're mowing grass 11 months out of the year. You get to southeast Texas, they're mowing grass 10 to 11 months out of the year. As you move north, you just start scaling back your months by every state by about a month to a month and a half. Again, it's based off of usage. Again, it's based off of the environment. Sod history, a wide open area, very few things to have to worry about hitting. Seems to be a pretty simple I say that tongue in cheek, a simple application. Um, what's in front of you fa is fairly simple. However, though, what's happening behind you with the implement, again, goes back to my earlier comment about, you know, implement monitoring or quote unquote automation. Uh, the third industry, I'm gonna go back to uh, where we originally started Monarch and our original focus of vineyards, vines, grapes, um, what we found there is, is that there was huge success early on in the state of California due to the labor shortages and the aspect of just being carbon neutral, right? Uh, the wine industry took a huge advantage of what we had to offer purely because of its width, its simpleness to run, and the vouchers that they were getting through the state of California. Progressing off from that, probably a number four is going to be, start to come our specialty crops of berries. Well, along with that, I would include probably some table grapes, raisins, uh, blueberry, raspberries. That seemed to be probably our next largest industry. And again, that's very similar to grapes. It's a trellised crop, pretty controlled, pretty similar environment, not too much change. And last of all, as we wrap up, I'm going to say we're probably looking at a, around the orchard space. So apple orchards, um, if we look overseas in, in some of the uh, European countries of pears, apples, in the U.S. it's apples. Um, we're looking into some groves uh, for oranges and citrus, peaches. Um, both of them, again, share controlled environments. They're a, more of a permanent crop and have very little things to change in that environment.